for problems that ask you to implement something using something else, there are five steps, okay? So let's look at an example, a very simple example, implement JK using T. Okay, so the first step that we want to do is to write a state table for X. Okay? So in this case, I'm going to write a state table for JK. Okay, and I have this JK table from my previous video. So if you don't know how to get this state table, um, make sure that you watch that video. Okay, so the second step is to look at the excitation table for Y. So in this case, I'm going to look at the excitation table for T. Okay. So this is my excitation table for T. Now step three. Step three is to construct a proof table. Okay. And this table consists of the input for x, output for x, and input for y. Okay, so in this case, my input for x is input for jk. Okay, so in the jk flip flop, we take in a j, a k, a previous state, and we're outputting the next state, right? So this is my input for JK, and this is my output for JK, okay? So we're taking in JK and previous state, and we're producing the next state. Now the inputs for Y is input for T, which is a toggle variable, a P, and a present state, which is QT here. Okay, so that is my what I need to fill out. So how do we fill out this table? So we look at the input for X. So these are my input for JK. Okay, and we're just gonna fill it out like how we normally fill it out. So zero one zero one. Zero one zero one. Okay. So there are eight cases. Okay. Now how do we get QT plus one? To get QT plus one, we look at the state table that we got from step one. So this state table has present state and JK, right? So this is my present state, this is my JK, and it gives you the next state, which is Q of T plus 1. So let's look at this case. JK, 0, 0. QT is 0. So present state is QT. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is going to give you a 0. My next state is going to be 0. Now 0, 0 for JK and 1 for next state, I mean present state. So that's going to give you a 1. So 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0 for Q. QT plus 1 is going to be 0. Okay. 0, 1, 1 for QT is going to give you a 0. So we just have to fill out this table by looking at the state table right here. Okay, so let me fill this out. Now we have Q of T plus 1. So what is T? To get T, we look at the excitation table that we get from step 2. Okay, so this excitation table has a present state and a next state, which is QT and QT plus 1. And it gives you T. Right, so to get T, we look at this region. So 
if we have 0 for present state, 0 for next state, then my p is going to be 0. If I have 1 for present state and 1 for next state, then my p is going to be 0. Okay, so we just have to fill this out using this excitation table. Okay, so this is going to be 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so make sure you know how to get this. Again, we just have to look here. So 1, 0, 1, 0, and it's going to give you a 1. Okay, so now that we have this table, our next step is to draw a k-map. So this k-map is going to take in a q, okay, my previous state, and my input for x, which is jk. Okay, so basically this, these three, input for x. Okay, this is Q of P. So, so JK has four cases, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay, and Q has two cases, 0 or 1. Now, what do I want here? What I want here is the whatever I have here which is my p, because this is a p flip-flop, okay? I want the input for y, which is p. So here is going to be my p, okay? So how do we get these values? To get these values, we just look at the tables that we, the table that we got from step three, okay? So we have j, k, we have q, now we want to see what p is, okay? So j, k, 0, 0, q is 0, then we're looking at this row, my p is 0. No, j, k is 0, 1, my q is 0, then my p is going to be 0. Oops, 0. Okay, so same thing here, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1, p is 0. 0, 1, and 1. So 0, 1, p, p is 1. So we're looking here, p is 1. Okay, so we just have to fill out this table using this, the, the truth table that we have before. So once we got this p map, this is my p map. Okay, so I'm just going to do the regular circling that we did before. So I'm just going to circle these two. I can circle these two. And from here, I can get the function um, t in terms of j, k, and q, right? So remember how we did came up before? So this one here, um, let's this one here is what? Zero, did these two agree on B, right? Agree on B, so not B, I mean K, okay? And agree on Q, right? Now these two agree on Q naught, and they agree on J. This is J naught. Uh, no, J. Okay. So, yeah, so this is just how we did came up before. These two, for both of these values, J, J is 1, K, they don't agree on K, and they agree on, on Q, which is 0. So J, Q, not, 
and then for these two, J are the same, I mean K are the same, so it's K, and then Q here. So we know how to do this before, right, from our first midterm. So once you have this, it's basically it. Um, you just have to draw out the diagram using uh, these dates. So basically, you're gonna have you're gonna have input J. I can't draw in here, so so this it's gonna be like J, and then Q naught, and then it's gonna be like an AND gate here. An AND gate, and then this is going to be K and Q. So it's going to be a, um, an AND gate again, and then we're ORing these two together, so we're going to have like an OR gate here, okay, so, and then you can draw like a box, this one from here to here you're taking in like a T. And then it's going to output Q and Q naught. Okay. And then this, this Q is going to, this Q naught is going to come here. Okay. And then this Q is going to come here. And then output is a Q. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So you just have to draw from here. This Q naught connect to this Q naught. This Q connect to this Q. And these two are an AND, these two AND together, and then these AND is an OR, so it's this function. And then from this output, we're feeding into T, right? This makes sense, because T is K, Q, AND, and then J, Q, not AND, and then the OR is a T, okay? And then this T is going to output a T, okay? Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Alright, so that is it. Um, I hope that was helpful.